I did not expect smoke to spread so quickly. Um, it was a magnitude, I, I don't know, maybe 10 times faster than I would expect a fire to spread on a space station. Uh, the smoke was immediate. It was dense. Uh, where I was sitting, I could see basically the five fingers on my hand. I could see a shadowy figure of the person in front uh, of me who I was trying to monitor to make sure that he was uh, doing okay. But I really couldn't make him out. And uh, where he was standing, he could not see the hands in front of his face. Uh, once the fire broke out, uh, back behind me, um, the master alarm went off, of course. The smoke uh, filled the station, and it, it was uh, readily apparent that there was indeed a fire. Uh, we immediately uh, started fighting that fire, uh, so everyone immediately went to the uh, ventilation, uh, the oxygen ventilators, and uh, they, they worked very good, and they protected us. Um, afterwards, of course, being a physician, I was very concerned with uh, crew health. We set up... Uh, a station for any respiratory problems that might take place. We had all the emergency uh, gear in place. And uh, from my assessment, I don't see where anyone had any serious inhalation damage, and it was due to good action on the crew to get into the uh, oxygen mask quickly. The fire was basically in this region here with the flame shooting across this way. And therefore, as you can see where the camera is, is basically where I was at, and we had one other body in front of me. I was passing the fire extinguisher, uh, but we can only get one person in here to fight the fire because of the flame location. And uh, at that time, the other Soyuz was on the other side where progress is now docked. So as you can see, it would have been very difficult to get through the flame itself to get to, the, uh, to one of the rescue vehicles. Uh, and it was very difficult to fight the fire because you could only get one body close enough to the fire itself. Well, good afternoon, and uh, as you've probably heard, there has been an event that occurred on the Mir uh, last night, our time, uh, right around 4 a.m. Central Time, or maybe slightly before. They were conducting a redocking of a progress that had been undocked yesterday. Uh, they were conducting a test of the manually operated, uh, or tele-operated robot remote unit for um, uh, docking uh, progress or other vehicles. And uh, during this manual docking, somehow they lost um, uh, rate closure control. Uh, we're not sure what the, happened with the control system, but at any rate, they missed the docking and the uh, progress itself impacted the uh, solar array on the um, uh, spectre module, impacted the side of the spectre, and then cleared the station and has now been uh, uh, seen uh, departing from the vicinity of the station. However, in the process of that impact, it somehow opened up a hole in the module. We don't know whether it was a puncture or a seal or a crack or what, but it did open up a hole in that module, which resulted in uh, a depressurization. The crew quickly um, cleared that hatch, closed the, the hatch on the specter, and uh, sealed the station itself from further leaks. So uh, it has remained pressurized, but the specter module itself is depressurized. And the major impact of that is that you've lost the uh, solar arrays, four of which are on that specter, that power major portions of the station. So they are reacting to that now, evaluating what their power situation is, and uh, of course are in somewhat of a power down uh, scenario, which they have been in the past, and are uh, uh, evaluating what their power generation capability is, what the plans for the next couple of days will be to recharge the batteries and recover those systems, and then how they'll operate in the future. Uh, Spectre itself is sealed. Uh, the crew is fine. Uh, they did sense the, the depressurization, uh, but reacted quickly um, based on their training and uh, sealed it up uh, even quicker than, than I had anticipated they would. And uh, they're all in good shape, but of course um, don't have access to some of their equipment that's in the Spectre. Spectre contained a great deal of uh, uh, human life sciences research equipment as uh, well as some of Mike Foles personal equipment and, um, and a couple of computers. So we do not have access to that right now and are not sure what the prognosis for regaining access is. Uh, right now they are continuing to evaluate uh, what the next step will be as they regain power and how they might affect either repair or recovery of the electrical power from those solar arrays. The uh, progress which was scheduled to launch on Friday and would have docked on Sunday with uh, supplies and logistics for the Mir has now been delayed approximately 10 days while they evaluate uh, addition of further hardware uh, to either add power or, or to uh, do repair activity. 
Uh, so we expect that they will continue to uh, evaluate um, as they wait for that progress launch and, and we'll look at how we might be able to assist or whether there's anything that we can provide to assist Mike Fole in uh, continuing his activities on the MIR. And uh, uh, with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Jerry is here to provide insight into recent life on the MIR and, and, uh, and maybe help uh, orient us on, on uh, exactly where things are. And maybe before we go into that, I should show you on the model, uh, as best we can tell, exactly where that uh, collision occurred. The, um, if you can see this on the, on the TV, the uh, Progress had undocked from this end and had flown away uh, for a day and was re, um, re-docking at this end when they lost control. It appears that as it went by, it went down the Perota side of the uh, core module. This is the Perota module here and impacted this solar array, which is uh, on the side of the spectrum module, bounced off of that and then uh, impacted the um, uh, radiator, which is on the side of the array, and, uh, and then cleared the station uh, with some rotation on it. The station itself uh, had a little bit of rotation initially, but they have recovered um, and are in a stable attitude, but they are not in as, as precise a pointing attitude as they would like for um, uh, electrical generation, and so they are working on recovering that. Frank, before we take questions, I think we ought to roll the uh the video that uh, we obtained from Russia that was downlinked from the mirror this morning. That's a good idea. The Russians did release a videotape, uh, and uh, we have a copy of that, so we'll go ahead and roll that, and, and uh, I'll narrate as best I can. It's a little bit scratchy at first, um, but what you're looking at there in the center of the picture is the damaged uh, radiator. To the right of that is the solar array that was impacted, and you can see some, uh, some damage on that once it clears up. They've rotated now to where the damaged solar array is at the bottom, and you can see the dents in the radiator. Um, that provides some protection for the hull, but we don't know where, as I said, the uh, penetration may have occurred. As they pan down the radiator, you can see what appears to either be holes or uh, damage to the solar uh, cells and some bending in the uh, uh, solar boom itself or the array boom. Um, Soloviev, uh, uh, Vladimir Soloviev, the lead flight director in the soup, is talking to uh, the crew, including the commander, uh, Vasily Sibliev, and uh, he's asking if this is all the damage they see, and, and uh, Vasily says, yes, so far that is all they see. And you can see where... Uh, it did hit the, the solar array. Um, and uh, he's saying he doesn't see any more damage on the body other than that you're looking at there in the radiator. The progress itself uh, is back under the control of uh, Mission Control Center in Moscow, and uh, they expect to deorbit that in a day or two. Uh, though they'll wait till it's well clear of the mirror before they attempt to do that, but their plan is to deorbit it uh, soon. That progress, to clarify, uh, basically uh, had items that were going to be discarded inside it and uh, would be burned up in the atmosphere. The progress with resupply has not yet been launched, so there are no lost supplies on this progress that did not go down. Okay, copy that. What about personal stuff? Hygiene kit, exercise shoes, personal items, clothes. I would really like to have a shaver, the, uh, the Philips shaver that Boeing does and sent for me. And I'd like to have um, toothbrush and toothpaste. Maybe about th th three tubes of toothpaste. That would do it. Copy. Yeah, um, I guess the only other real question right now is, uh, Perota, do you know what things were powered on when the power got cut? What switches may still be on, that sort of thing? I turned off all pubs, and I turned off all equipment in an orderly fashion. Excellent. The only thing that I'm worried about now is the Beatles. The Beatles are living on batteries. Right. The batteries will last 30 days, but it won't be able to do a light pulse, which is on Tuesday, so we would try to get no, 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 one no, no, after no. then. Okay. The biggest picture in all of this is that um, uh, we, we did lose a module. 
out of this event, which is the Spectre module. There's a chance that the power may be restored to that module in the uh, next few months. Um, and that quite a lot of uh, American life science equipment was left in that module along with my personal effects. Um, since then, uh, I've managed to find myself a toothbrush and toothpaste and, and clothes and uh, even a pair of shoes to run with. So life is getting back to normal for me um, as far as just uh, everyday living. How safe do you think Mir is? Were you ever personally frightened during any of this? And did you ever worry you and your crewmates might have to bail out? Bail out. Well, that was a lot of questions. Um, I agree with you, it's been a, a pretty exciting mission. Um, as far as safety goes, the time when I felt most unsafe was uh, right after the moments of the collision um, of the Progress vehicle when it hit down, down below us on uh, the Spectre module. At that time, um, I don't know, I've been in, in uh, bad situations before where you, you, know, you, you don't quite know uh, how things are going to go next. And in those moments, you don't get frightened, you just kind of, uh, you go into this kind of mechanical mode of thinking things through and trying to figure out what to do next quickly. And uh, afterwards in reflection, you know, days later when I thought about what had happened, that's when I, I felt a little bit frightened by it all, but uh, the, the day that it happened, that nothing really uh, came to mind like that. Um, what was the other part of your question? I forgot the rest of it. If you ever have worried that uh, you guys might actually have to bail out at some point when you were going through this process immediately after the collision. No, yes, we, I mean, the initial order for me to go to the Soyuz spacecraft was specifically with that in mind. When we thought there was a collision imminent, the, the thought in our minds was we are going to have to bail out. And uh, I was the first one to go per the procedures to the Soyuz, and there I waited. Then, as it became apparent that the, uh, it wasn't a devastating um, puncture of the hull of Spectre module, and that we had time to work and try and isolate it. Then I came out of the Soyuz, understood implicitly that uh, we were not going to be abandoning quite yet, and uh, we then uh, proceeded to work together. I was uh, Sasha Lazutkin to uh, clear cables and uh, hold a, uh, a hatch in place over that module's um, entrance way. We had about 24 minutes of um, what we call reserve time before we had to be in the Soyuz if we hadn't isolated the leak. And so once we determined that time, um, and proceeded the commander had done that, we knew that we had some time to think carefully, clearly, what we were doing and uh, work through the problems of sealing off the, the, uh, the leak and the hatch. What happened during the power down two weeks ago? A cable was accidentally unplugged. We were curious as to how that happened. Who might have unplugged the cable and what the consequences were? And thanks. Oh, you're most welcome. That, that's a, basically, we have uh, to get the, the node ready. The node is, is the junction of all the modules of the uh, space station there. And the cables, the, unfortunately, cables laid across the, uh, the portholes. And those have to be unstuck so that uh, we can do an EVA from within the, uh, the node. And uh, the crew were unsticking. Um, one of about a hundred or so cables, and uh, when I say unstick, they're unplugging them, and they're big, big, thick cables, and they're all the same color, they all look the same, uh, per a list that the, uh, the ground is sent up, and one of those was uh, mistakenly unplugged, and even as it was unplugged, we got an, uh, an alarm uh, and an emergency in the attitude control system, at which point beyond that, the, the uh, station lost attitude control and caused us to uh, basically hang out of control in space for about uh, two or three hours while the space station gyroscopes, which normally stabilize it effectively, stand down. And only after three or four hours was Vasily able, uh, with Sasha and my help, to, to go to the Soyuz spacecraft and then control manually the space station. And it's a very tricky problem to try and get the space station to spin in a rather rough way so that its solar arrays were pointing at the sun. And then we were able to reestablish power. But because we were floating out of control for three or four hours, uh, well, for a, num a number of hours, we lost power because our solar arrays were no longer pointed towards the sun. How confident are you that the Mir-24 crew will in fact be able to make that repair? And what are your thoughts downstream about the feasibility of ultimately repressurizing and re recovering the entire module itself? Over. Well, I honestly um, don't know. Uh, the whole plan, as laid out to us, looks good. Uh, I think um, we have the hardware here. It's right behind Sasha, who's filming this right now. Um, it's ready. It's in the um, in the node and ready to go. 
we were ready to go and do the EVA uh, should we have been called on to do that. The, um, I think that procedure is straightforward enough. Um, it's just the unknowns out there are what has happened to the module spectre in terms of getting the power from the arrays through the uh, structure of the spectre to the cables to, uh, which Anatoly and Pasha are going to uh, be connecting up. So beyond that, we don't know so much. I know that the EVA can be conducted and I know the cables can be conducted, can be connected together. But, and beyond that, whether they can do a repair on the outside of uh, Spectre or not, um, again, this is all new ground. And this is very, very interesting and worthwhile ground that uh, people are investigating and trying to solve together. This is a joint effort to repair the Spectre. Uh, Americans are involved, our specialists are involved in this work as well as the Russians are. In, and I think the experience is going to be very valuable. However, we do not know whether it will work uh, as far as repressurizing Spectre goes. Do you have any concerns about uh, the possibility of contaminants in, in the sense of blood samples or any other liquids that may have been released in the accident? Any concerns about cleaning that up or any threat to either EVA crew members or repressurizing down the road? Um, that has not really been discussed uh, on our normal technical discussions with the soup. I think because we, we honestly just don't know. However, I, I, I lived in Specter, that was where I had my stuff, and I had one or two drink bags on the walls, uh, there were some fluids there. There is some blood in, um, in a refrigerator, which has long, long ago uh, lost power, of course. However, they're all contained, um, the blood samples especially, so I don't think they're going to be a problem. The only thing I'm slightly concerned about is whether or not my uh, shampoo bottles and the, uh, the drink bags burst before they um, froze. But most likely they just froze and formed slivers of ice and that's the condition that they'll be found in uh, Inspector. I doubt very much that um, there's going to be much floating around in there. It was basically in pretty good shape in terms of things being tied down.